this video, we're finally going to build a dashboard. And a dashboard is really just a collection of the worksheets that you've been creating. Let's go ahead and do that. What I actually want to do is I want to clear out these ones because I want to create some very specific ones for the dashboard. And again, repetition, get you that, uh, get you to practice. Uh, let's go ahead and delete this. I'm going to right click delete. And I'm also going to show you something very, very cool. Delete. And if you go to this last one, see deletes not available. The reason for that is you always need to end up with at least one sheet. So before you can delete this last one, you have to create a new sheet first before you can delete this. It's a little thing, but people still ask me about that. And what we're going to do is we're going to do three, three sheets. So I'm going to create another one and another one. Let's call the first one line and area. Let's do this one bar. And the last one we'll do pi. So we're not going to do crazy formatting, just a quick one, because really this video is about um, dashboards. For the first one line and area, we're going to do actually three measures. And here's a little trick. If I hold control and I select all three, or as many as you like, and then we're going to select um, a date uh, dimension, we go to show me and we do continuous line, for example, it can actually build all three. So you can see how much time you can save with this stuff. Imagine how long that would have taken in Microsoft Excel. You know, you're cleaning the data and you have to select the fields and then you have to do all this stuff. Oh, geez, it's a pain in the butt. We're going to change the granularity. We're just going to press this plus symbol. There we go. And we're going to just give them a little bit of a color. Uh, maybe I want to make them all areas. So instead of modifying each one, I can actually just use this all card and it modifies all of them. So I can go area and now they're all area. Neat little trick. I can go to this first one. Let's make this orange. Let's make the second one green. And that's probably enough for the formatting. Let's head over to bar. And we're going to do two cat uh, two dimensions. We're going to go category and let's do subcategory. And for the measures, let's do two again. Let's go uh, profit and sales. Let's go show me. And we're going to do the bar. You can do it that way, or I can go column, whichever you like. Probably best for this example to go with the bar uh, going this way. And we're also going to give it some color using category. So let's take category and drop it into color. That colors the whole thing. And another thing is we've used it for pies, but whenever you do bars, it always takes up only what it needs to take up, uh, which doesn't really look good. You want to really maximize the real estate. So you can use that same function we did for pies from here and switch from standard to entire view. And it goes and stretches itself out and it looks much nicer. Let's do the last one, pi. I'm going to do just the standard one. So let's say region and let's go quantity. Let's do the pie. There we have it. Let's go entire view. And I'm simply going to add the label. That's all region. And there we have it. Let's build a dashboard. So first we have to create a dashboard kind of, I want to, I don't want to say sheet, but we have to create a dashboard first. If you look down here, there are three buttons. The first button is a create sheet. The second button is create dashboard. Let's go ahead and click that. And you'll notice it looks very different. Your one might look a little bit different. This is maybe a different size for you, but that's okay. We're going to cover that. Uh, this is basically where your visualizations go. So, you know, you have your bar charts and you have your pies and, and all that. You have it here. And what's the other one we did? and lines and all that. So we're going to build that now. The first thing we want to do, and I'm considerate because everyone has a different size computer. Some people are using, you know, gigantic curved gaming screens for War World of Warcraft or something like that, um, or something, something crazy like that. And then some people have tiny 10 inch laptops. So what you're going to do for, for you is if you go over here to size, I want you to adjust it for your screen. Let's go into here and there are multiple options. We're not going to go into detail about it um, because we do cover that later. We're instead going to go fix size and leave that on custom. And you keep adjusting this using the controls until it fits nicely on your screen. You can see my one's shifting. And for me, that's, that's good enough. I'm happy for that. 
Okay, let me just have a little scratch here like a dog. Let's bring in these sheets. There's two ways you can do it. You can either double click and that brings it in instantly or you can click and drag it in. The way the click and drag works is it's all tiles. It's not floating things that you have to make it like fit together. I hate that. That drives me nuts. It uses up so much time trying to get them to fit nicely. Thank God for Tableau that they just put them in tiles and everything just slots in. So I can do that for Pi as well. So let's grab Pi. Um, the only thing is this does take a bit of practice. I've noticed for people for some, like when I did this, I kind of go, yeah, it makes sense. You just put the tiles wherever, but it's sort of like for some people, for some reason, a lot of people need a lot of practice with it, but that's okay. You just practice. So if I wasn't to move Pi underneath here, I grab this handle. So I've got to activate it first. So you activate it. And then you'll see this handle right here. So you grab that handle and from there you just hold it and you can see if it, if it covers the whole thing, it means it's going to swap. Okay. I'll do that again. Swap. If I put it kind of to the side or to the top, all right, to the side, it will go next to it. And then the other one will stretch down. If I wanted to put it underneath the bar one, again, we're going to grab it. I'm going to go, I'll do this really slowly and go here and you can see the bar one has now dropped down. We can move this one up, All right? That replaces it. And if I keep going, right, we have that one at the top. What do I do if I want this bar to be all the way across and then this one to go next to the pie? This is where it gets tricky. I grab this one. So it's a bit of foresight where if you grab this and you put it here, it ha the rest of the visualizations have to fill the available space. So if I drop that in here, everything will kind of space out. Once you get used to it, you can build <laughs> dashboards and visualizations so damn quickly, it's crazy. I can also adjust the sizing of these until it suits me. So for the rest of them, I'm actually quite happy. For the pie, it's got way too much white space. I can either reduce this. So once I've activated, I can reduce it like so, or we can finally use that sizing tool. So we can go back to this pie sheet and we can adjust this size. So if I increase that, let's have a look at how it looks on the dashboard. A bit too big unless you really like pie. I love my apple pie. So let's make this a little bit bigger like that. And you can see it fits a little bit nicely, a little bit more nicely. And let's shrink it down a bit. There we go. And now let's talk about these legends. These come by default based on what you've already designed. So for example, this bar, if I go back to, what is this bar? If I go back to the bar sheet right here, this one actually has a legend that is automatic. Once you add a color or once you do all sorts of things to it or formatting, you'll start to have more legends and labels. And once you start doing filters, you'll start seeing filters as well. So that's kind of part of it. Sometimes you may not need it. Let's say this office furniture, this coloring is really just to help distinguish. It doesn't really mean anything besides that. So if I activate it, I can actually press this X and just get rid of it. Same goes for this pie, which is the region. I can get rid of it. If I ever needed to bring it back, I simply go analysis and wait, hang on, we're going, hang on. Uh, we have to activate the sheet from which it comes from first. And then we click on analysis. Then we click on legends and we just bring back the color legend. You can see it there. I can also move this um, somewhere else as well. So if I grab this, I can move it just like everything else. And I can put it underneath the pie. So you can see now it's grayed out. It's like that. And maybe I want it to be like completely flat. So if I grab the top of this, just slowly, you can see now it's a single line. And if I want to adjust how wide and uh, spaced out they are, just to the left of the next one, you'll see these dashed lines come up. And if you drag it, it will evenly space itself out. So neat little trick. Then we have just this one more. These ones, are, so all these things like legends and filters and all that stuff, once you start seeing them, they all go inside this default container. This is to keep it very neat. Um, so you don't have filters and buttons all over the place. It all ends up in here. You can later on add some more. 
Uh, but again, let's not worry about that. For now, if you wanted to get rid of it, if you click this first one and get rid of it, it will just disappear on its own. But if you want to get rid of it entirely, you click this white space until it turns blue, and then you press X. And anything you have in there, let's say you have 10 legends that you don't need, you can just get rid of all of them, of all of them in one go. Oh, hang on. There we go. And just a warning, delete container. You have something inside. Yes, delete. And everything, again, will fill out the available space. Next thing is the title. So if I go down here all the way to the bottom left, you'll see show dashboard title. Let's click there. And I can actually edit the name of this simply by double clicking. Let's call this my most colorful dashboard. And same as like tooltip, same as uh, text labels and all that, I can modify this. My go to is 22 blue, 22 blue, 22 blue. And I'll just justify it. That's kind of like my standard. I'll go like that and just go OK. There we go. And I can also edit the names of each of these sheets. By default, the name of the sheet, uh, the name of this comes from what you name it down here. That's why it's so important to name these because otherwise you get sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, sheet four, sheet five, and you get so confused. And I see even like the most seasoned professionals wasting so much time. They put the wrong one in, the right one back and all, all this kind of stuff. Add up all that time for a year. That's a lot of time you've wasted just trying to find the right one. You know, just be organized. From here, we can actually customize these headings. So I'll just do one of them. If I double click, oh, where's my drawing tool? If I double click this, I can actually go in and type whatever I want. When it's grayed out and it's got these kind of greater than equal to, it means it's a like a dynamic label, which means it'll self adjust based on what you call it in the sheets. But sometimes you haven't got that much space and you want to give a better description. So we can say um, category and sub category sales and profits and go OK. Won't, won't worry too much about the formatting in a second. Um, and that's how you do the labels. Last thing I'm going to show you is once you start having more sheets, more dashboards, it can become quite annoying having to format every single one. A little trick you can do is if you go up here to format and you click on workbook, this lets you format the entire workbook and everything else that you build moving forward. If I, for example, want to change the format of the entire workbook, everything I do, click on this first one and switch it to something else. So I'm going to change something just ridiculous, just so you can see that it's different. So I'm going to go Viner Hand ITC and everything changes. That is just like a blanket thing. If I want to change the text inside, so all these text, I can do that using worksheets. So let's say I want to make that bigger. All the internal data labels and all that get larger as well. And I can change all the colors. You can see all everything's changing color. You probably don't want to go to these <laughs> this extreme. Let's change the font back just so you can read it a little bit. Let's go trebuchet. Uh, the next one is the tooltip. So when you hover, you can see this tooltip. I probably wouldn't use this because I tend to customize my own tooltips anyway. But if you want to adjust them all, let's say I just make it ridiculous. 24. You can see it becomes gigantic, you know, gigantic. Um, the next one is the worksheet title. So that's just the one we modified right here. This is a massive time saver because you, you will be going inside titles a lot to really give it proper details. So I actually don't like it when it's 15. I feel like it's 12 should be the default because 15 is too close most of the time to the title size. And you don't want it to kind of grab that attention. So maybe 12 is good with a bold and, you know, give it like a slightly different color. And that already looks pretty good. Dashboard titles, which is this one. Let's say make it red. You can see that top one is red. And let's make it 22 bold. There we go. And story titles. We're not, we haven't done stories yet. So the benefit of doing it this way is that when I create a new dashboard, I'm going to create a, just another one and chuck stuff in. You can see... I'm just going to do this super quick. All the formatting that I had just applied to the other one is already in this. That means I can churn out heaps of dashboards 
already formatted, already organized. I just have to do maybe a little cleanup in layout and it's done. You can literally create a solution in like half an hour. I have had contracts and projects where someone goes, listen, we've been struggling with this for months. We want to be able to see this half an hour done, you know, and they're just like, holy crap. Like, how did you build that so quickly? When you know these tricks, you can really create really quick solutions and you can get through that iterative process, which we'll also be covering in like how you go about your projects, how you meet with clients, how you manage your stakeholders, how you come up with solutions, you know, all your agile development, ah, there's a lot of stuff you are going to learn in this course. So that is it for dashboards. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you at the next video. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to learn the entire Tableau platform, consider enrolling into my course. It's one of the highest ranking courses on Udemy and enrolling today, you'll be joining the almost 200,000 students that have enjoyed my courses over the years. Thanks again for watching and hope to see you in the course.